<laughs> all right we're gonna go through setting up an FTP server I already had a video but it was old and low quality and uh, there was music playing in the background which probably made it difficult to hear or possibly even annoying to try to pay attention to so here's the door better more and improved version uh, more and improved yeah so anyway to install an FTP server as root log in and type yum dash at dash y install v s f t p d and then v s f t p d at go in front of that second one uh, type system dash config dash vsftpd so you're installing the vsftpd which is the server itself and then system dash config dash vsftpd which is the administration console all right now while you're doing that and it's downloading and installing you have to consider something else there are two methods for authentication there is no authentication at all which is anonymous users which you do not want and I cannot see a good reason to have. And then there's uh, authenticated users, which means username and passwords required to log in. Well, in order to create a username and pass or uh, authenticated user, you have to have an actual user on the system. You've got to create that user. Now, go to system. I'm sorry, I should, probably should have told you while I was doing it. Go to system, administration, users and groups, open it up, and then. Uh, you got to create a user. Now, I already have FTP users, and so, but I'm going to go ahead and just real quick and create another one. I'm not going to cover the um, user accounts, group accounts, um, account maintenance, things like that, privileges, because it's beyond the scope of this article. That's an administration article. Um, but I will show you how to create one and discuss the relevant pieces of information. For the username, create whatever you want. And for the uh, full name, you can leave it blank. Password, make it whatever you want and confirm system shell login shell whatever it's called uh, leave it bin bash create home directory uncheck unless you know for a fact that you have a good reason to create a home directory uncheck that create private group for the user uncheck unless you have a good reason to be creating one click ok now as you can see down here it's still created for a home directory it still put a value in uh, for forward slash home forward slash that user's name which is the default action that you told it not to do I don't know why it still does that possibly because you did not indicate another directory I don't know but then again you don't have that option who cares we could speculate forever anyway primary group it gave it the and put it in the group for generic users um, and home directory we gotta fix that so if we like I said we don't want them having a home directory because we're going to be putting them into a specific directory later. So just home directory, erase our username because that does not exist. And oh, yeah, one thing I meant to mention, I just tried to record this video and for some reason it stopped recording the audio halfway through it. And so that's why I'm doing it again. But anyway, one thing I forgot to mention the first time is if you do not erase their home direct their username after the home directory uh, slash username directory, if you do not erase the username directory out of this, then when it tries to log that user in, the FTP server tries to log that user in, even though even if you have it specified to put them in another directory after they log in, it will not be able to log them in initially because that user that directory that you're specifying here does not exist because you told it not to. Unless you told it to exist, but then again, you already know what you're doing. If you told, if you already know that you want them to have a home directory, probably. Anyway, you also do not maybe need the home directory at all. Now, pay attention to what I'm about to say because it's not going to make sense right this moment because you st you don't uh, have the proper context presented to you, but you will in a few minutes. Uh, but pay attention now because here in a few minutes you'll realize why this is relevant. Right here for a home directory. If you know that you're going to have all users changed and or changed into a certain directory, then you can go ahead and just put that directory's uh, file path in or directory path in here. Um, for example, I have a well. I'll go from my top level so it's easier for you to see. I have under file system under root. I have multimedia one, which is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of movies. Um, so if I know I'm creating an account for people, my you know family members to log in and watch movies, um, then I would just you can click this little icon here, copy the text out of that box, put it in here. 
Multimedia One. And that's the directory they'll change into by default when they log in. And the, and then if VSFTP, it can just leave them in that directory instead of, uh, if that's the directory you're telling VSFTP to put them in, then it, they're already there, so that's good to go. Um, now, if you're having different user accounts that are going to be put into different directories, you can specify that directory in here. However, uh, there's really no need to have home or forward slash home here. If you choose to leave a home directory to actually create a physical home directory for that user, for example, forward slash home, forward slash whatever, that's fine and dandy, uh, but I'm assuming you know what you're doing. But otherwise, put the directory in that you're going to be wanting this user to use, such as Multimedia One. And remember, if that directory does not exist, they will not be able to log into the FTP server because that directory doesn't exist for their initial login it doesn't matter the FTP server is going to be changing their uh, directory afterwards they have to be able to log in to an initial directory all right now go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this account because I don't need it now um, also uh, I usually say this at the end of the article but I'm gonna go ahead and say it, say it now because I've already got this open um, keep in mind that FT the VSFTP server, the FTP server you're about to set up, it can limit what directories the users are allowed to go in somewhat, but it cannot limit what they're going to be able to do in that directory as far as read, write, and execute, things like that. In order to uh, make sure that certain users can only do certain things, you need to apply, give them the proper group name and then assign on the directories themselves, for example, the Multimedia One directory, assign it the proper permissions and assign it the proper the proper group name and proper um, permissions for that group which you'll probably be better off doing through the um, terminal through the command line um, because you for groups the owners groups are displayed not all groups so you don't have the option to choose a different group you'll have to do that from the command line and I, I don't know why they never thought of adding a, uh, letting you choose other groups that the owner does not belong to Anyway, um, you got to make sure the folder's got the appropriate group and owner settings to limit what they can do inside that folder and then uh, limit, uh, give their account the proper group settings. Uh, I cannot discuss any more than that because to do that would be going into uh, system security and administration, which is beyond the scope of this article. So we're going to go ahead and close this and watch later on. I'll have to open it again because I forgot to mention something else. All right, now go ahead and open the oh applications, system tools, VSFTP administration, or I'm sorry, FTP administration. And you get this uh, convenient little interface to use to edit your FTP server settings. One thing I will say about this interface, it's buggy. Uh, by buggy, I just mean that it works fine, but <clears throat> anytime you make a change, you gotta go to File and then click Save. And then after you're done, you gotta go to File and <laughs> click Save again. And then after you're done, go to File, Reload, to reload uh, all the current settings and to make to make sure your settings apply to begin with um, if you only click save once I've noticed that when you reload and you also to click save you can also just hit control s like you normally would uh, on a file and then to reload you just hit control r like you normally would in a web browser to reload the page um, but remember to save twice to reload once every time you make a change and after you make a change click on server control and then you can click stop FTP server and then click and then 